What's going on my friends? Today we are going to do a trim out of a residential job I've been working on. So the first thing that we are doing, we gotta pass out all the receptacles, all the switches. I think this would be a good opportunity for Josh, uh, my son, who's been working with me to start working on putting receptacles in, putting switches in. So I passed everything out, uh, told Josh to put all the plugs and switches in. Now on this job, we're doing screwless plates for everything. So we don't have normal plates. Um, all these screwless plates have these like two piece things where you gotta put like this back plate on it and then you gotta put a cover over it. Um, so it requires a little bit of finesse. So there's like 300 of these cause there's four buildings to do. So I figured this is a great opportunity for him to just get like repetitive practice over and over and over on this. One of the things about putting screwless plates in that kind of sucks is that you have to make sure that the device itself is not pushed in too far and it's not like sucked into the wall. The, the actual uh, yoke or the strap that holds the device in place has to sit like perfectly straight on there. Otherwise the edges of the screwless plate start to kind of pop up and then there leaves a gap around it. And then the back plate has to be, you know, tight, but it can't be too tight or else you're gonna start pushing uh, the, the plate in. And again, that outer plate for the, the screwless plate won't sit down flush. Now, before we get too far into this, I kind of want to brag on my kid for a little bit. So like, dude, as any like teenage kid goes working, you're always going to expect a little bit of like laziness and kind of like fuckery about, you know, like finding them on their phone or like just doing stupid shit, wasting time. He's not doing that. I I had a doubt because he's a like teenager, but I never really doubted him because I know who he is. This kid has insane work ethic and I'm so incredibly proud of him. He's not sitting on his phone all the time. He's not just like lazy, not doing anything. If there's downtime and there's nothing to do, you know, he, like sure, he might be on his phone doing something like if we're sitting in a truck or something like that. But as soon as I'm like, yo, hey, come help me. He's like, boom, done. And like, he's always willing to work. He's always ready to work. He asks tons of really good questions. That's a lot of really stupid questions too. What is a drywall screw? I guess I haven't explained that to him yet. <laughs> Do y'all call them black buttes? We call them black buttes. Are they? Let me see. Let me see. What do you got? Yeah, that's a drywall screw. Good job. You're so good. Hey, but over here, this one looks like asshole. But that's part of it, right? Like getting into this, being new, being fresh to it. Um, but like you always want a helper that's super eager. So for any of you that are apprentices out there, just know that your job is to anticipate need. You are supposed to be watching and like gauging everything that's going on around you. And if somebody looks like they need something, you need to make sure that they've got what they need. So anticipating need is something that makes a really, really good apprentice. Um, so he does that and he's constantly asking questions like, hey, what is a service and how does a service work? And what does the black wire do? What does the white wire do? Why can you, can you explain like before we build this huge 400 amp service, whatever that means, can you like tell me how we're building it and how things work, you know? Like, so he's just engaged and he's doing a really killer job, sweating his ass off in this 105, 110 degree heat every day, getting sunburned, not complaining about a thing. Anyways, I just wanted to like give my kids some props cause like, bro, you're killing it. I'm super proud of you. Anyways, so the next thing that we did was installed all of the trims for the recess cans. So this whole job has three inch cans everywhere. And it kind of seems to be like a normal thing lately. We do a lot of really like, upscale homes and it seems to kind of be the zeitgeist right now of the time to put really minimalist everything in. Like people don't like seeing receptacles in backsplashes anymore. So they want to delete everything and they want to put like plug strips up underneath the cabinets. Uh, so you just don't see it. They also want to do like these tiny little cans or they want to do mono points or something that's just like less than these huge six inch recessed cans everywhere. So uh, we got some three inch, these are LED and they're selectable. So you can select whatever um, range of color that you want because a lot of lamps come anywhere from like 3000 K, which is 3000 Kelvin, um, which is a, a lot more of like an orangish yellow, kind of like on the red side of the spectrum, all the way up to like a five or 6000 K, which gets like super white, almost to the point of being bluish. Um, so this gives them a range that they can kind of select the color of whatever they want. 
Now, one thing to always be super mindful of when you're putting recessed can trims into a freshly painted ceiling, even if you're putting like receptacles and switches and all of that in walls, is not to get fingerprints on walls. So in the nicer homes that have like plaster walls and we're talking like really expensive stuff, I'll actually wear gloves like latex gloves to make sure that my filthy hands that have like oils and sweat and dirt and all kinds of crap on them, I don't get that all over the walls. So especially up on ceilings, because the ceiling needs to be just pure white everywhere. And if somebody walks in and they just see these like little brown smudges or black smudges everywhere, it just looks like crap and it looks like you didn't know what you're doing. So always be very mindful when you're putting in these trims not to get fingerprints on everything. After we got all of the trims put into the recessed cans, the next thing we had to do is put up mono points. And a mono point means that it's just a single light mono and it points in a single direction rather than having like a triangular shaped uh, bulb that's gonna spread light out and kind of light a whole area. A mono point is gonna focus light straight down. So they put tons of these mono points everywhere. And stylistically, I really like them. I think that they look cool. The hard thing is just making sure when you have a whole line of them that every one of them is pointing straight down and these are high ceilings and it's a vaulted ceiling. So trying to get up on a 12 foot ladder and getting all of these things pointed straight was really difficult. I found that putting a laser on the floor and shooting up the laser and trying to hit the center um, of each one of the lenses made it a little bit easier to focus all of it. One kind of crappy thing about this job is that we took it over from a different electrician that wired it. So this is way out in the middle of nowhere. It's like an hour and a half out into the hill country where there's just no civilization. There was a different general contractor that was running the job. They had their own electrician, which was a local electrician. They wired this place and holy banana sauce. <laughs> they did a terrible job. Now for like country wiring, it's really not as bad. I've seen much worse work out there. So like in general, I think like wiring, there's just a lot of things that they didn't know what they were doing. So they ran like California three ways, but they didn't wire them together. Right. So they were like just doing weird stuff. So we had to rewire a bunch of stuff. They used panels as junction boxes. So there's like weird crap, like in our panel, it's not just home runs. There's all of these PVC conduits coming in the bottom and there's like crappy wire, weird colors too. It's not even like just single phase. There's like blue conductors and stuff in there. So we had to spend tons of time toning out where all of these wires went. There was nothing really kept on the plan. So like there's tons of stuff that just made absolute no sense. But out of this panel, we've got like a conduit that goes over into the island and there's just THHN, just conductors flying into the bottom of this island. No conduit because the conduit is probably cut off at the floor. So you gotta like fix stupid problems like that. There's floor plugs that come out of the bottom of that panel too and they use it as a junction box to like pass through from one thing and go to another. So there's just all this crappy wire in there. And the even worse part about it is all of its Siemens. So Siemens, usually when you get an interior panel with Siemens, it comes with a panel cover in the box. The panel cover matches the panel, but when you use old stuff that they don't make anymore, you can't find those panel covers just independently to buy them. If you don't have the panel cover, you're kind of SOL. So in this case, I have a 42 circuit panel and I got a 42 circuit panel cover from a new panel at, the, at my supply house and I went to put it up and it's like three inches too short. It's still 42 circuits, but the class of panel, I guess, is like an older class. So the measurements of it are much larger. And I've been trying to track down just a panel cover and I can't find one. And I mean, we've contacted Siemens. We like, we've gone through the whole gamut and I cannot find a panel cover to replace this. So unfortunately, this crappy panel that I really don't want to touch and do anything with, I'm going to have to pull it out of a fully finished painted wall cut it all up. I've got home runs coming in from the top. I've got conduit coming in from the bottom and it's all like custom cut in in the bottom too because there's no knockouts that match with anything. It's just going to be a nightmare. One thing I could do is probably get like a custom little gutter or like a, a custom made junction box or something and install that in the wall and cut out and get all my conduits in there and then just make joints and run everything clean up into the panel. But that's going to be even more work. So I'm going to have to just redo this hack stuff that we're coming across. The conduits that were run outside that go to the service, there's a service video I'm actually putting together right now, so stay tuned for that. 
uh, coming soon. But whoever ran all the conduits, like there's some of them that are like sticking out of the ground like 45 degrees. There's some of them that are like three feet away from a building. So like I'm gonna have to go dig all of that stuff back up. I'm gonna have to heat it, try to bend it, or put 45. I just I have to do so much work because of the hack work that was done with this. So anyways, that's my rant about this job. Uh, it's just an unfortunate thing about it. Now, the last thing that I did today was I put exterior lights out. So they have some exterior light fixtures that look very similar to the mono points that are going inside of the house. Um, it's just instead of being like top mount pointed down, they're side mounted. Um, and then some of them will point up and down, like they've got a bulb in the top and one in the bottom. Some of them just point down. Every single one of these fixtures, when I go to like work on the pancake, a bee flies out at me. Not even a bee, a wasp. So like, let me rant about Texas real quick. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, you're like, let's just get on with the video already. In Texas, everything wants to kill you. That's one of the like, worst things about living in Texas. The wasps, the, the scorpions are trying to sting you. We've got fire ants, we've got rattlesnakes, like black widows, brown recluse. Every animal is trying to kill you. Every plant is trying to kill you. We have bull nettles, so if you like wipe your arm up against it, it feels like you just got stung by a wasp and it's just this tiny, cute little plant. Kind of looks like I don't know, it's got all these like spines on it and stuff. That there's cactuses, there's like all kinds of crap. Everything here like hates humans. <laughs> so I just had to deal with these damn wasps flying around and there were nests everywhere. So you're just working and there's just wasps flying everywhere. So anyways, as I'm putting up all of my exterior fixtures, I'm having to like battle with wasps, do wasp karate. Uh, and uh, so I got all of the exterior lights put up and that was all the time that we had for today. So I'll have to come back, finish putting some of the, uh, the vanity fixtures up in the bathrooms and start going through, trying to figure out what all of this wiring is and all of the craziness that we're seeing. Probably what I'm gonna do is get the service built. It's gonna be a 400 amp service with a generator transfer switch. One of the buildings is gonna be on solar. So it's gonna be a kind of a cool job to show y'all. Um, but I wanna get everything heated up get my panel seated up, get everything breakered out so I can at least start turning things on because it's a lot easier to troubleshoot what's what and what's happening where once you've actually brought power into the building and then you can kind of figure out from a good baseline rather than not having power and just having to tone every single wire out. That's just gonna be a mess. So, if you guys are curious to see any more of the residential jobs that I've been doing, make sure you click here. This is a cool ranch that we did recently that we're still working on. If you wanna see some of the commercial work we uh, have going on, I'm doing a commercial job right now where we just set the slab up and we're doing light poles and all of that. So if you wanna see how I do all the underground work, make sure you click that. Love you crazy people. Thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next one.